Game on. Ah! Hey there, game gurus. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today's kind of a special day. Today's my birthday, and actually, funny thing and fun fact is also P Dubs over at P Dubs Arcade Loft. Well, today's his birthday too. I might have him beat by a couple of years though. But that's not why I'm doing this video. I just want to do a quick little video here. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of New Wave Toys and, and their uh, machines. Uh, recently, I did receive their uh, Space Ace, which was the version of Space Ace that people had dragged to land their arcades, converted into a Space Ace. But there actually was an original cabinet design for Space Ace, which I personally never saw in the arcades. When I played Space Ace, it was the converted kit from Dragon's Lair into Space Ace. That's what I remembered. But New Wave Toys did send me out a, a review unit uh, of the original uh, Space Ace. So let's just take a look at the differences in the cabinets. It's not going to be a full review of the gameplay or anything like that, but just look at the two different types of cabinet designs and to see what you like. I haven't actually seen it in person yet. It's still in the box. So let's unbox it and see what this one looks like. Let's get started. Okay, so we can see here are my three uh, Laserdisc games. This one is the original release of the Dragon's Lair. And you can't tell by looking at the front the difference between the original and the new version of Dragon's Lair by the front. The real difference is this one does have HDMI out, but it can't do the display and HDMI out uh, at the same time. This one here with the red on it is the new generation one which does support HDMI on this screen and also exter external HDMI out. And the real reason for that is they are planning on releasing the monitor that goes on top in the arcades. This thing was so popular and it was also expensive, 50 cents a game, which was a lot back in the day. But it was so popular with people who could actually play the game, it was almost like an art. So they started putting TV sets on top of the machine so people and the huge crowds that were outside watching could actually see the gameplay of what this person was doing here because it was hard to see 50 people you know, looking at this screen. So this machine, unfortunately, will not be able to use that display at the same time. Now, you can still put the display on top of here and see it, but it wouldn't play in here. Now, this one will let you put their monitor on top, what they call their pedestrian uh, or spectator mode monitor. That'll sit on top. It'll play this at the same exact time, which is just a nice feature. Again, it's just a throwback to, the, to uh, when these were in the arcades. Now, this is the spaces I recall seeing. And this one, however, does, like this one, support the external spectator mode monitor. But you can see the design is identical to the, uh, the original Dragon's Lair. Because this was the conversion kit. Again, arcade machines were very expensive. Now, these were even more so because they had new technology. They had laser discs in here, which were very expensive back in the day. And they also were pretty troublesome. They had a lot of problems with the, uh, with the laser disc players. But for an arcade owner, when this game wore out its welcome, you could put in Space Ace, just convert uh, the artwork, convert the marquee, change out the laser disc and the game ROM, and they got a whole new game without purchasing a whole cabinet. So from an arcade owner's perspective, this was the better way to go, because a lot of times they, they did that. Unfortunately, and the sad fact is, in the history of arcades, um, a lot of machines this happened to. So we lost a lot, even though there were maybe, I don't know, I'm going to say off the top of my head, 100,000 of these sold. Maybe it's probably like 10,000, whatever it was. There's less of them because a lot of these were converted into this. And even worse so, sometimes they even took these and converted into something completely different altogether. So these machines, which are basically, honestly, an art form, even though the games themselves are, are okay, um, a lot of the machines were converted over to other machines and they're lost through the sands of time. But again, from an arcade owner's perspective, this was the right way to go. But let's take a look at this one here. Now, New Wave Toys did send this out. It wasn't for my birthday. It just happened to be my birthday when I'm showing this off. Uh, they did send this one out to show me basically the differences between them. And you can see some of the other New Wave Toys items in the background. And I saw one post. You know, I bought this because this is the one that I remember playing in the arcades. But then I saw one guy post saying, listen, he didn't buy this one. He bought this one because what he liked about New Wave Toys was the accuracy to the different machine types. And that got me thinking like, oh my God, you know, he's, he's right. Um, even though I got this one, it's, it's probably would have been better to purchase the one that was more accurate to the original vision 
of the game. And uh, Cinematronics was the organization that uh, released this. So fortunately, they did send this one out. Now for the Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, I didn't take it a chance. I, bought, I just bought both. And that's usually what I do. I got my Coke machine coming. I have my Zohar coming. Um, not the Zohar on YouTube, the Zohar machine. <laughs> but I do love all this stuff from New Wave Toys. And, you know, for the room that one arcade one up or other machine takes up, I could put a whole bunch of these. Which you can see I do have even more below that you can see here right now. But in any case, plunge babbling again. So let's take a look. And again, once again, I do like what they do here. They do uh, ship these in like the shipping boxes that these would have come with back in the day. And I do ask Shiloh, I really would love to see a little ready control forklift. So we can actually, in a little pallet, maybe make it even a little pallet. So we can display these boxes as well because you know what? I save all these boxes too. I know I'm crazy, but in any case, let's open this thing up here and uh, see what we got. I gotta try and be very delicate because I do collect all these things and I wanna keep them looking nice long after Glenn's last birthday has come and gone. But here we go. Just a quick look at the machine. And all these always come in, they're always shrink wrapped. So if you get one that isn't shrink wrapped, they opened it. So these are always shrink wrapped. So let's get this thing out of the box initially here. I'm gonna take off camera just for a second. Just to get this out of the box without ruining the box, because Glenn is box insane. Boom. I'm gonna put this box safely out of the way. Okay, so again, they do a nice job. And you can see even just from this photograph on the front that the machine looks different. The marquee here has got these bezeled sides, which is on Dragon's Lair. This is more straight. The machine is, looks taller as well. But you can see they did a really nice job with the packaging. I know that the lights I have in here. I got these new lights in here. Once I get the shrink wrap, shrink wrap off, it'll look a little bit easier. So let's do that right now. And then we'll take a look at the box. Let me get my trusty X-Acto knife. And we'll very, very, very carefully open this up because nothing makes Glenn's day worse than damaging a box. Actually, I didn't even need the exact knife, so look at that. So again, these always come shrink wrapped. If you ever get one says it's new, never open, but it's not in shrink wrap, well, they lied. Just get the shrink wrap out of the way. And now we can get a better look at the box, I hope. There we go. So you can see the machine does look quite a bit different, but the game is exactly the same. There's no difference in the gameplay. It's just the original concept for the uh, for the machine. We have all this information to do it. Again, you know, they spend a lot of time on these boxes and artwork and everything. So they do a really, really nice job. So let's open this thing up. And they always put some artwork also on the inside. So when I open this up here, there's probably gonna be some other artwork inside, let's see. Oh, there it is. There's your work. So you got uh, Borf, with his Infanto Ray. You have Ace and his form when he got hit with the Infanto Ray Dexter there. So let's see what we have in the box. It's mostly gonna be the same things we got before. So we get, of course, our we get our charging cable, which they have now converted to USB USB C instead of the uh, micro, which is a nice touch. And they also include these different ball tops, or for the uh, for the joystick, it's red which I remember, but they have blue, yellow, purple, and black as well. And of course they include coins. And what's kind of nice about the ghouls and ghosts and ghosts and goblins is, it actually will need these to play the game. You put these coins in to actually put the credits in. They include a recreated uh, laser disc. Obviously that's a lot smaller than the real thing. They're manual. And inside here, uh, if I remember right, let me take this out. They had a dragon's lair, uh, I'm sorry, space ace. Um, like poster made. Let's get this thing out of the box for a second here. And that clunking you keep hearing uh, is Qbert. They actually put a solenoid in there for that effect. So here's here's the laser disc, which other people already posted. I'll leave that in there because I'm a nut. So inside here, they usually have like a, looks like a recreated like Don Booth poster. And, and there it is. And that's just, again, really nice touch. This costs them money uh, to make and they include it. So it's just kind of nice. If you're a collector, Little touches like this are kind of special. It just shows that they have a love for the fans. And that's what I like about New Wave Toys more than anything, is that they do uh, care about their fan base, and they try to do the best they can to give you the most bang for the buck. So enough of this, let's get the machine out and do the comparison. So again, they do a really nice job at packaging everything. They're really good at making sure everything's got enough foam, 
inside to make sure everything arrives okay. And now my last bag, my last bag was Space Ace. The bag was ripped. So I kind of freaked out about that. Let's see if this bag does a little bit better. And I try not to ruin the bag because everyone knows Glenn is bag crazy. There we go. Pull this out. Let's get this box temporarily out of the way. Let's try and fold it halfway decent. And move this out of the way. And let's take this plastic bag off. It looks, actually it looks good. No damage to this bag. No, now I need an exacto knife. With the dullest blade on the planet. There we go. Good. A little surgery on the bag. So this machine actually does look really, really different. And uh, I'm gonna take up this little piece of, I don't even know, these never stayed on right. Every time I get them, I don't know why that is, but it's coming off anyway, there we go. So there's a pretty stark contrast at the two machines. I guess the height, uh, it looked like it was a lot taller, but actually the height is, is the same. And I also thought the marquee was flat when it's actually not, it is still beveled. So I guess from the photograph, it, did, it looked quite different. Now the control panel, as you can see here, does look quite a bit different. The control panel is much more flat, the machine is much more flat, and the monitor is actually tilted down a little bit more. And from what I can tell in here, also the scoring is on the side uh, versus dead center. So I'm not sure why they did that, but hey, that's what they did. So let's just take a look at power this machine on and see what we have. So we have a uh, rocker switch. Let's turn this around real quick. We got a rocker switch on the back. And we have a, a rocker switch in the back for power, which they use a rocker switch now to make sure nothing happens to the uh, the video files that are on here. So you have the two USB ports, volume, USB-C for power, um, the HDMI out for using a secondary monitor. And of course on the back, they still include the nice uh, DVD, I'm sorry, I keep saying DVD, but it's the laser disc player, laser disc player here in the packaging and foam covering on the bottom and padding on the side. Space Ace, Defender of Justice. Keep that nice and safe. And the Ace is being attacked by the evil Commander Borg. Look, it's almost synced, look at that. Pretty close. Defender of Justice, Truth, and the Planet Earth. Ace is being attacked by the evil Commander Borg. Hold your fire! Is that creepy? Borg! Earth needs the surrender to me. No way, Borg, old buddy. Oh! Ah! I've been hit! By the Infanto Ray! Earth needs the surrender to me. Struggle with Dexter to retain his manhood. Destroy the Infanto Ray. Defeat the evil Borg. Defender of Justice. So that's really it. I just want to just really just show this between the two. And again, you know, I, I never saw this in the arcade. So that's the reason why I initially purchased this. But the styling is definitely more polarizing. Uh, if you walked into an arcade and saw a Space Ace like this uh, versus the Dragon's Lair cabinet. But um, again, you know, they have the same effects here. The coin door opens up like so. And you can put your charging cable down in here. And the two buttons light up here. Uh, I do like in the future versions that you have to actually put the coins in the two slots for the game to actually work, which I think is kind of neat. But other things I just noticed is, you know, the, in the Dragon's Lair and the Space Ace, they have the numeric uh, LEDs in the center. Well, here it's off to the right. And me, I'm, I'm very, I like things symmetrical. Um, which I have a Hyundai Sonata, 2018 Hyundai Sonata, and I hate that my shifter and everything is not symmetrical, the exhaust is not symmetrical, it drives me nuts. So that's off to one side, 
They still have the dual speakers up here, obviously speakers in the back on it, but the cabinet has these sides here. And, you know, I'm assuming the arcade had this as well. I've heard other people mention this before, that these screws are exposed on both sides of the cabinet. So I'm assuming that's how the arcade machine was. Again, I never saw this in the arcade. Uh, they have the nice rubber feet in the bottom. Now, one thing I did notice, they always used to include rubber feet in the packaging. And I noticed with the the, uh, the Space Aces and the, uh, the Dragon's Light re-release, that they don't include those rubber feet anymore. Not that I've had a problem with feet falling off, but just kind of weird they did that. Um, all the artwork looks always good. It feels very smooth to the touch. Uh, they do a nice job. Now these sides are wood with the decals on the side. So, uh, you know, as a collector, I think I agree with the post I saw that it's not so much just buying the machine, but you probably want to buy the machine that most closely represents how it was initially, even though this is what I saw. So. Unfortunately, I guess I have to buy two. And again, I don't think these things are priced horribly. They used to be uh, cheaper, but everyone knows the chip shortages, everything has gotten more expensive. So this is still gonna probably set you back 150 plus, uh, plus shipping. But uh, you know, for early adopters, if you just sign up with them, you usually get a 20% off uh, code, which will save you a little bit of money. But I, I have not really been disappointed with anything from New Wave Toys other than their Tempest release, because they did a similar spinner as Arcade 1-Up. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, they're all the other machines I've been extremely happy with, very impressed with, and uh, this one's no different. I'll give this one some gameplay today. Uh, okay, that's really it for this video. So this was, you know, the original Space Ace here, and uh, the one I remember, and I'm very proud to own this one. But this one here, you know, it's starting to grow on me. I never saw it in the arcade, and when I saw it initially, I'm like, ah, I want to get the one I remember. But uh, this one's starting to grow on me as well, so I, I do think that uh, the poster I saw saying that you probably should get the ones that most closely represent the original vision and that's this one right here so that's it for today's video you know if you do want to get one of these um this one i know is definitely going to be for sale shortly on new wave toys website they just went out to all the pre-orders the same with this uh space ace as well um so that's it for today's video i do want well, want to once again wish everyone who is a taurus which are, is the best zodiac sign by the way uh happy birthday uh if yours is on May 3rd, uh, which mine and P-Dubs is. P-Dubs, happy birthday again to you. And if you're celebrating your birthday today, I wish you a happy birthday. But that's it. I want to say thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it does help out the channel and the algorithm so people can see it. Still on my long, long road to 10,000 subscribers. I'm about 180 subs away. Eight, almost nine, nine years now. Ugh. Nine years working on it. So um, I hope I hit 10,000 before I, uh, well, for the end of the year, it'd be great. <laughs> In any case, I appreciate all of you watching the videos. You guys mean a lot. Love the comments. Please comment down below. Did you play Space Ace? Which one of these did you play? Was it this one? Was it this one? Me, it was this one. But no matter what you do, no matter how you played uh, Space Ace back in the day, remember, it's just a game. Remember to tell your family and friends that you love them. Tomorrow's never promised. But in any case, game on. Game on. Sit, Blue Blue, sit. Good dog.